This is Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom. Words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust today this is like a vitamin or a supplement for your mind and heart. And wherever you receive podcasts from, would you please subscribe to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom? Leave a rating and a brief written review. It will enable others to be able to locate this podcast. I'm excited to talk to you today about a new discovery in my life, something that I have just begun implementing in the last six to nine months, and it's really showing some good results. I call it goal-setting sprints. Now, I have also noticed by uh, looking on the internet that that seems to be something that's in the domain of a specific um, discipline, calling them goal-setting sprints. So we may need to say something else or call them something else, but let me describe what caused me to jumpstart some things that I was doing. I have uh, goals in several areas. One overarching area is goals for a lifetime, things that I would like to see happen in my life. I have them spiritually, physically, uh, financially, uh, vocationally, um, career, on and on it goes. Family, my relationships, I have several of them. And they are goals uh, for a lifetime that I'd like to do. I then break them down uh, yearly and and so forth. And that has, down through the years, served me very well. But I noticed about a year ago that even though I I follow the principles that I talked to you about, that I I break them down, I break them down into steps, um, a couple of things that have helped me is when I have a really large goal, is to look at the goal and then to say, what are the five steps? Now, some of them are going to be rather large steps, but what are the five things that I have to do in order for that to happen? Now, that doesn't mean just five little small steps, but five things. Now, sometimes if the goal isn't real large or real long term, it it won't take that many. But this is a great exercise that I would um, encourage you to do. And then you can take the five, and that's where you begin to order them in number and then break them down into smaller actionable items. So I I was doing this and was doing okay, but I I kind of noticed last year that I wasn't making the progress in a couple of areas that I thought I really needed to. And so I spent some time reflecting on exactly why is that? Is it, do I have too many goals? Uh, Am I in a rut? Am I just in a tough period? Well, none of that seemed, the the tough period didn't seem to be overly true. Um, Maybe I was distracted by too many. So I decided to, now for me, I did it quarterly. You could do it any particular way that you uh, would want to do it, but I did it quarterly. And one quarter, I had three what I called sprint goals. Uh, I have found now through trial and error for me that no more than two helps and probably one would be ideal, but I do two. And let me give you some guidelines. Uh, Pick, look over your goals for this year, for a lifetime, wherever, whatever your goals are. And find two that if you really concentrated, if you really focused on them over the next three months, Could you get them accomplished? Could you move things forward? For instance, uh, let's say your particular situation, I can pick anything. Let's say it's paying off credit card debt. What would happen if over the next three months, you laser focused on that one thing and you thought about it every day, you took action every day, you began to get creative, you began to put all of your energy and effort into that. I think you would see some real results. That doesn't mean that everything else um, on your dream list goes by the wayside. It just means that you take one or two, I would suggest, like I said at one time, in typical Dr. Ron fashion, I tried three and discovered that, that two is really better for me. One would probably be optimal. Do not overcomplicate it. Whatever I have discovered that as I'm reflecting on it and thinking my way through, what am I going to attempt this next quarter? 
for a sprint goal, don't overcomplicate it. What is something that's maybe a little nagging, but I mean, um, it can't be world peace, um, and it can't be something like, I'm going to solve climate change in three months. It, it needs to be something that will stretch you, but, but it's doable, and it'll be more doable if it becomes the main focus. Don't overcomplicate it. Perhaps even start with something on the simpler end. All of us on our list have something that's just been on there, and it just keeps hanging, and it's sort of nagging at us. It's always in the corner of our mind. What if you made up your mind that in the next three months you are going to get this accomplished? So don't overcomplicate it, and you don't have to wait till it's the quarter on the calendar. Start today. You can start in the middle of the month and just count out three months ahead. One thing that I do know, my friend, is this will stretch you. This has stretched you. It's almost been like a kick start in, in goal achievement in my life. It is basically, for me, it's controlled movement. Here is this thing that's out there, and you have discovered these things that you're trying to do are not going to solve themselves. They're not going to finish themselves. They're not going to complete themselves. I, um, If you're not a spiritual person, this may seem mysterious to you, but it's amazing now that I've gone through three cycles of this and I'm in the fourth that when I declare this is what my a quarterly sprint goal is going to be, I meet people who I didn't know who are going to help me. I find and discover and come across a resource that I had no idea would be available to me a month ago when I attempted this. It's as if God, or for you, maybe others of you, the universe, begin to conspire to help me when I declare this is what I'm going to do. It, it helps me in controlled movement. I think a lot of it goes down to, have you ever gone to the um, auto dealership and bought a particular brand and model of car and color? And as you're looking at it at the car lot, you say, I have never seen this beautiful car anywhere. I don't know anyone in our town who owns this automobile. And you pay for it, or you sign your life away, you get in the car, you drive off the dealer lot, and on your way home, you see nine cars exactly like the one that you just bought. Well, the fact is, they didn't just suddenly appear out of nowhere. They were always there. You are just now focused and concentrated and more aware. That's what I have found that sprint goals do for me. So it'll help you this quarter to jumpstart, I believe, if you focus your efforts to just... Uh, one, no more than two areas or goal. Maybe your, your goal is a healthier lifestyle. Set a fitness or health routine for three, the next three months. I'm going to walk around the block. I'm going to eat a certain way. I'm going to um, sign up and get a personal trainer. Work out every other day. Whatever it is, you're not going to get in shape by just thinking about it. It's going to require um, action. So rather than spending a bit of a time each day on a lot of things, pick one and focus all your efforts on it for a while. Now, I know you can't quit your job. You still have to help your children. You still have bills to pay. I, I get all of that. I'm not saying that you quit everything and focus on one thing 24 hours a day. But I'm saying if you really just spend a few moments focusing on the same thing every day for three months, you will be amazed at the changes it brings to your life. And here's uh, some byproducts of these sprint goals in my life. It's as if I am taking a crash training course in consistency. Uh, that is a key word because your, your habits are developed by taking particular actions incrementally, day by day, consistently. What I've discovered the sprint goals are, they keep me consistent because I know I have a deadline. 90 days is not all that far. It's far enough, but it's not forever. So I can't keep kidding myself. Well, I'll make progress on that someday. I'll get to that next week. I'll write that book next year. No, if you set this as your sprint goal, you have 90 days and you're going to run out of time. It's sort of the same principle that Brian P. Moran in his book, The 12-Week the Year, has 
in that you can get a year's worth. His theory is you can get a, a year's worth of work done in a quarter than you can just sort of floating along for a year thinking about something. It, it really just focuses your attention and, and focuses your action. Now, I have a tendency to gamify things, so it becomes a, a game streak for me. Um, I don't want to not do it, and therefore that also holds me accountable, knowing that when I conduct my reviews, I'm going to ask myself, um, did you do what you say you were going to do? You know, my friend, it's a terrible thing to lie to others, but it's really a grave mistake to lie to yourself. So make sure you keep your commitments. I just have a time block early in the morning in my calendar on my morning routines in which I focus, pay attention, or take whatever action it is. I'm big on Xing out things. I do that if you were to see my calendar, my, my list. So I X out. Did I I check it off? Did I do it today? And here's what I discovered on the uh, few times when I really didn't reach in 90 days what I intended to reach. And I could become discouraged. But on further review, and this is the importance of reviewing, I was amazed, even though I didn't exactly achieve it 100%, I was absolutely at times astonished at the progress I made. I was moving in the right direction. And whenever you are moving in the right direction, wonderful things will happen. Don't sabotage yourself. Don't, don't make it unrealistic. I, I would say it, just like uh, practicing any new discipline, start with something small that you have a little more confidence can be done in 90 days. It still needs to have a bit of a, of a stretch to it. What I have, what has helped me is I've kept notes. And when I look back on the notes, I, I discovered, and this is a great lifetime practice for leader, I discovered actions I thought would make a difference didn't make much difference at all. And other things that I wasn't particularly sure whether they'd make a difference made an appreciable difference. So keep notes, keep reflecting on those, and it will help you to be able to understand moving forward in other areas of your life. These are the kinds of things that will move the needle, and these are things that are nice to do, but they don't particularly uh, move it real far and real fast. The other thing in the midst of all this, keep positive. Even, even the quarter where I wasn't able to accomplish what I thought I could do in the sprint, like I said a moment ago, when I, on further review, saw that I didn't get it accomplished, but I was farther and closer to it than I was 90 days before when it was just sort of something out there that I should be doing. Create your metrics. Create how you're going to measure success. One of the problems for us leaders is uh, we say we're going to be successful, but we've set up no metrics no measurement, no yardsticks, no plumb lines. We have to know what we are measuring. So now that you've defined it, what your goal is, what you want to get accomplished in the next 90 days, what will that look like when you achieve it, and what will it look like when you get there? Now, you know, for all of your other goals, you you, you do the same sort of thing, but when we have yearly or lifetime goals, they, they seem to be so far out there that we don't feel the angst as much when we're not moving it into our uh, area. One of the things that I did when I then identified my sprint goals is I tried to identify what are the obstacles that are going to keep me from achieving this. It's, some of it's my own uh, self, but some of it is I need particular tools. It may even be that you need someone to come alongside and assist you. And then in real short time, because 90 days is a short time, I had to break them down into manageable action steps that I could take daily. The great thing about the sprint goals, another great lesson that it taught me is it forced me to be action oriented and not just thought oriented. A lot of people love to think and you should and it's great to think and you have to think. But thinking is not action. Thinking is preparation for action. And so having sprint goals forced me to be action oriented. It gives me another tool 
on checking in and monitoring, monitoring my goals and monitoring myself. But again, I will come back and end like I started. Perhaps the greatest lesson I learned in all of this is by having sprint goals and really focusing on one or two things for a quarter, it really creates motion and momentum. And here's what you know. Once you create motion and momentum, you will begin having success in other areas. It follows this very simple principle. You get better at one thing, and it seems you get better at other things as just a added bonus. And I probably need to do a podcast because I have seen that happen in my life. Why don't you give it a try and see if the sprint goals of setting one or two goals that will stretch you but you're going to put a 90-day time limit on it and you're going to force yourself to take action to move you in that direction. And I'd love to hear how it works out for you. You've been listening to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom. Words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust today this has been like a vitamin or a supplement for your mind and heart. And wherever you receive podcasts from, would you please subscribe to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom leave a rating, and if you could write a brief written review, it will help in the algorithms, especially on iTunes, that will bring the uh, podcast to the attention of more people. Remember, my leadership friend, you are doing better than you think you are. You really are. And until next time, have a great and blessed day. 